The Paris Climate Change Agreement officially becomes international law today. So far, 96 countries have signed on to the agreement. That accounts for just over two-thirds of the world's greenhouse gas emissions. More countries are expected to come on board in the coming weeks and months. The goal of the agreement is to limit global warming to 2 degrees Celsius and foster a transition away from fossil fuels to more renewable energy. As the agreement kicks in, we are joined by the Minister of Environment and Climate Change, Catherine McKenna, who was in Paris for the deal. Good morning, Minister. Thanks for being on our program. Good morning. So what makes the Paris Agreement different from other agreements or efforts made in the past that didn't do much to reduce emissions? Well, what's really uh, exciting about the Paris Agreement, and it's it, really exciting, it's, uh, it's the one-year anniversary, is that 195 countries came together they said we need to tackle climate change, but they also agreed, all of them, that they would have their own plans. And that's really important because we know that if you're going to uh, keep temperatures below two degrees, uh, every country needs to be doing their part. And so that happened. I think another piece that was really important was that you saw not just environmentalists there, not just countries there, but you also saw business. So Mission Innovation was launched, an initiative with Bill Gates. Uh, where you know, countries and investors are going to be putting significant investments in new technologies that are going to grow the economy and also you know, make sure that we do our part in reducing emissions. So it, it's, a, it's a real effort where everyone came together, not just a small group of people. And so uh, I think it demonstrates that we are on a different path. There is disagreement in this country among the provinces as to how to best reduce emissions, but at the same time not stifle economic growth. How is the federal government going to get everyone on board with one plan? So it's really important that we, we look at the environment and the economy go together. Uh, and that's why we're developing a thoughtful plan. Uh, and we need to be working with the provinces and territories, which I've been doing as for the last year. Uh, and so looking at what are the pieces, what are the ways that we can reduce emissions while growing our economy. And so one of the things we announced was putting a price on pollution. And that's really important because businesses, uh, leading businesses in Canada, including in the energy sector like Suncor, like Shell, like Synovus, have said, put a price on pollution. We'll figure out how to innovate. We'll, ha we'll figure out how to move, uh, reduce emissions. And also, I mean, that positions us well because we'll find solutions here that we can export to, say, China, where the opportunity has been put as a $30 trillion opportunity to uh, help them green their economy and reduce emissions. South of the border, we have two candidates with very different visions of climate change and what should be done. Donald Trump says climate change is a hoax. Hillary Clinton has hinted at a move towards greener technology. Does the Paris Agreement fall apart if Trump wins because he says the U.S. will pull out? What happens to the Paris Agreement then? Uh, well, you know what? 195 countries signed the Paris Agreement, so it's not just one country. Uh, and when you look at the leadership that's been shown by a lot of countries, including you know, somewhat unusual suspects, China has really been pushing hard. They're launching uh, a cap-and-trade system, and they're pricing pollution next year. Um, so it's not really about one country. I, I think it would be very unfortunate uh, if a decision was made to pull out of the Paris Agreement, obviously, by the U.S. Um, but I don't think that that changes that we're going in a particular direction. And it's actually a missed uh, economic opportunity, as I've said. Like, we have opportunities to invest and innovate. And we had a great agreement with the United States, uh, President Obama and uh, the Prime Minister, agreeing that we need to grow our economy while reducing emissions. So I think there's an opportunity for a North American solution. Um, but you know what? Regardless what happens in the U.S. election, I'll be working really hard uh, with my U.S. counterpart, with Mexico, with the whole world to figure out how we just march forward in a way that's practical, that's thoughtful. And there's also a lot of work going on with the states. So different states uh, are working very hard to reduce emissions. So we've seen that California is in a system, a cap-and-trade system, with Quebec, Ontario's joining. The eastern seaboard is looking at how do they get clean power from Canada. So, I mean, there's also a lot of things that happen at the state level. We saw this when uh, the last decade, uh, the previous government took no action in, on, uh, in terms of tackling climate change, and provinces led the way. So regardless what happens, we're going to still see action in the U.S., and internationally, everyone's marching forward. Is this government concerned about a Donald Trump victory on Tuesday night? 
So, you know what, I, I don't engage in hypotheticals. Uh, you know, I would say that we're just looking to work with whomever, uh, the U.S., but also internationally. I'm heading to COP22, where I'll be meeting with uh, other ministers of the environment, foreign ministers, and figuring out a plan. Because this is the way we know we need to reduce emissions. Uh, it's not just the right thing to do from an economic perspective. It's also, you know, it's really about how we're going to uh, make sure that we have a more sustainable world for our kids. The Liberal government is promising to run all government operations on renewable energy within a decade. How is this going to be accomplished, Minister? Uh, well, so the focus is on yeah, public works. Uh, so all public works buildings uh, will be on renewable power. I was just at a wind energy conference uh, a couple of days ago in Calgary, and the excitement was clear. Wind is now actually competitive in terms of price. Uh, with more traditional uh, energy. So there's just an opportunity to do this. And we're talking about a decade. And this is a transition we're in. We're clearly moving towards a lower carbon future. And what's interesting is the companies, you know, more traditional energy companies are also moving to wind. Uh, so, you know, everyone realizes that we need to look at renewables as a solution. And as a government, we need to be leading by example. So I was thrilled about this announcement. I think it's a real opportunity for us. You know, we're going to be going through a competitive process. But as I said, like wind and uh, solar, the prices have come down dramatically. And that'll continue over the next decade. Catherine McKenna, thanks so much for being with us. Appreciate it. Great. Thanks very much.